Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to get underway. software that you can put your logo over like the stand that the 360 camera's on so yeah. you can like crop out the 360 the stand or whatever so you he just put a corn giant corn thing and then corn manor was just we found a giant yellow house and he walked up to it a bunch of times and the thing is yeah and you never win it yeah we were using, <laughs> well, better yet there's not even really a camera around because it's just a stick on top of the car so these people just see like him get out walk up to the house and walk away a bunch of times like no cameras around or anything <laughs> that's hilarious yeah 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 that's, that's fantastic good. it was yeah. such a funny bit, like short it's so fucking <laughs> great <laughs> what is this what is that called cinema drum is like yeah yeah Gainesville cinema drum is that just you and your your buds no, we're team boy toys. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, games with cinema drum. It's like the, the. I mean, they put these on, and then I guess they have, they have a place where they show. They have like a small theater, I think. Um, and sh- no, I guess they don't. They that's it can't possibly be true because then they would show these there. But it's just like um, a community of filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Cool. But there's somehow a business in it. I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> it's kind of cool. That's interesting <laughs> that you don't know. That's a mystery. It's, wow. a, it's a mystery. <laughs> you need to tell me. You need to find out. <laughs> and uh, this hey. podcast is all about mysteries today. Welcome to Coming of Age. Oh, oh, oh shit. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Alan Leesbrock. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Uh, oh, first this time. You got in there God. first this time. God damn. Uh, Dan Joplin. Oh, hey, that's me. That hey. Uh, and Chase guy who is over b- here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm not cutting, used to being last. Yeah, cutting, well, cutting people. Oh, man, that was, okay, so let's talk about... We'll always be. Let's talk about just uh, one little teensy-weensy thing that I want to talk about is that I watched a movie, and I did not finish it. Oh, and I... <laughs> Did not make it very far, and I'm wondering if you guys have seen it, and I'm wondering if it's worth it. Okay, guys, can you give me that? Can you give me that? You want to guess you. what film? You want to guess? Are we gonna guess? You wanna guess? It's a Guillermo del Toro movie. Oh man, <laughs> is it the <laughs> and devil? It's devils? on Hulu, and I was like, what am I gonna fucking watch? Because I don't know what to do right now. It's late at night. Let's find something weird got josh brolin in it (laughs) i'm confounded already i know i know it is about a cockroach cockroach it's about a cockroach la cucaracha as they say okay okay la cucaracha (laughs) i thought he was gonna start singing la cucaracha in the Mm. same vein as uh think i'm gonna die (laughs) Oh, that would be great. <laughs> goodbye, my life. Goodbye. <laughs> I can see that going, Latin. Um, yeah, that's the <laughs> cucaracha. I think is Spanish. It's it's mimic. Mimic is what I watched. Have you ever seen it? Oh, you saw mimic. <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't seen it, but I know. Have you ever seen it, Dan? That That's a no. That's a no over here. Okay, well, yeah, no one's seen it, and uh, this movie. Oh, well, not that's not no. No one, one has ever seen this movie. <laughs> No one ever. No one in the history of any. Not even the guy who put it on Hulu. It was just like, but, what's this? I don't uh, know. Fuck it. From from what I saw, this movie Toro and is about a scientist creating a cockroach, like biolog- biologically engineering a cockroach. Cockroach. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. Like science. Have a very short. Like I can't remember what they did. They did some certain thing where they were like. Uh, cleaning or something, and they and were engineered to. <laughs> they had mops and brooms. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> they were eating waste or some shit, you know. And they were engineered to die, like in you know, 
I don't know, 10 months or some shit. But okay. they were engineered but then, to like, explode. Three years later. And they live uh, forever. There's like this woman who's an etymologist and she's studying all these bugs and these kids, really weird 90s kids that like, you're just like, what? The? They're like so 90s. And you're just like, yo, what's up? Like, we got this bug. <laughs> it's like a little white kid with bug teeth. And you're like, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they got a really weird big bug and it bites the etymologist. And like, then there's like a fucking big man thing that is killing people around the city. And I'm like, is that a cockroach? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, are cockroaches just big and evil now? This movie and sounds strange. <laughs> it's very yeah. strange. And it's raining the entire movie, and it's so dark. This woman is in a lab. <laughs> this is the funniest shit. <laughs> I was thinking, this woman's in a lab, and she, like, hears a noise, and she, like, goes to investigate, and it's the darkest lab I've ever seen. Like, there's literally only moonlight coming into the lab. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> and you're yeah. like, what the fuck is she doing? <laughs> like, there's, like, lights, like, LED lights from, like, computers and stuff around, but, like, what the, Turn what on the some Bunsen this is burners. This movie, clearly. There are Bunsen burners everywhere. Turn them shits on. Make it, it was, romantic. It was very odd and yeah, quite right. hilarious. Bunsen and burner like, would be a great shot, too. Like, having all the Bunsen burners on, and it'd be, like, all symmetrical and, like... Oh, very. But then do cockroaches? <laughs> no, cockroaches run from the light. Cockroaches wouldn't like the light, though. But then I'd be yeah. like, "Why yeah. does this bitch have all the buns and burners on? <laughs> Turn on the fucking lights." Yeah, but then let's you, get this plot going. <laughs> but if the shot is good enough, you can go. It doesn't matter. That looks awesome. I excuse lots of things in movies because of that. I'm sure you do. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, mimic. Don't know whether to watch it. Um, or not, probably not, because you know that guy fucking sucks. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro. Are you he serious? He made a fucking generic ass movie and won <laughs> Best Picture. It fucking bullshit. I will say this: it wasn't as generic as Spotlight. Wasn't no Hellboy. Wasn't no Hellboy <laughs> though. You're right. It wasn't no Pan's Labyrinth either. <gasps> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hellboy's awesome. <laughs> I mean, Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, they're both awesome. Mm. Is Hellboy awesome? I don't think it's awesome, is it? It's good. Well, there's Nazis it's awesome. in it. I thought Hellboy was awesome. <laughs> I thought Hellboy was awesome. I loved Hellboy. I'm questioning my existence right now. I mean, that's about the voice that you had when you saw Hellboy and said that initially, so. Probably, and I haven't seen it since, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we walked into Hellboy to the Golden Army for about 10 minutes. Did not pay for a ticket. Just walked in, sat down. Made some jokes, and then we're like, we're out of here. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> I remember going to that. It was like probably like 2009 or 8. Oh, man. Whenever the movie came out. Yeah, yeah. Whenever the movie <laughs> came out. I'm just speculating from the people I was with. Kung Pao <laughs> is one of the only movies I've walked out of. You didn't? Kung Pao? Enter the I Fist? I hated Kung Pao into the fist. Wow. You're a heretic. Like you and still do, though? You like you don't I like haven't it. I haven't. Seen, why would Boy. I rewatch it? It was garbage. Yes. No way. No, it's so funny. No, it's amazing. I, it's I hated so it, and I was like the perfect age for it. I was like fucking like thirteen or some shit. I would and argue you're the perfect age for it now. The, the, and just knowing you, I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah like, it's like, that makes sense. That. Dude, like, I don't know. know. <laughs> I did not. I was not into it. I just went out to the lobby and played Arctic Thunder until my mom picked me up. And that was dope because the well, AC vent still worked on that's it. That's too bad that next uh, month uh, is Kung cool. Pao month and we're watching Kung Pao all month. <laughs> yeah, we're oh, watching that movie four damn times. It. <laughs> God damn about it. it. Every fucking week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we no, do a Groundhog second, Day month the, where we just do Groundhog Day watch, every time. Uh, oh, we're my doing God, that's hilarious. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, duh. And it's just going to be the same episode but with slight variations. Oh, yeah. man, February. What are we going to do? Some rom-coms? <laughs> no, we're doing Groundhog Day every episode. <laughs> every episode. Yeah. <laughs> the three weeks, because February is not cool Is cool to not have four weeks. <laughs> it's so cool, it doesn't have four weeks. So this is what we do. But we does it name have... the episode Groundhog Day. It part. has four weeks, exactly. Actually. Groundhog's Day right. Part 2. And the same thing. It's got the same date on it, but... This time it doesn't star Bill Murray. Brand new episode. <laughs> 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 Tricking the folks into not listening to our podcast. <laughs> Already doing it. Oh, I listened to that one. <laughs> oh, I just skipped that one. 
<laughs> they're already listening. Why do they keep releasing the same episode? Oh, they release the same episode again, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it uncut? You know, that would be a great like gag to do. That would be so funny to do that. It would. It would. We Not would, anymore. Well, now we talked about it and cut that shit. Well, out. no, press Surprise the button. Everyone. Yeah, you just press the button, <laughs> the button and then boom, it's fucking reset. It's the it's the it's easy button. Thanks, thank you. I'm just yeah, saying. Then if we just don't talk about the Groundhog Day, idea, God damn it, press the button again. That's something <laughs> you get Groundhog for. Day. Idea. God damn it, no more talking about Groundhog Day. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I wish the button made a noise audible enough for the mic to pick up like. <laughs> 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 It's like a flatlining heart monitor. It's just like <laughs> the more you press it, the closer it gets to flatline. <laughs> Too many mistakes. I think it just. I think it just. I think it just goes. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Whoopsie. Whoopsie poop. You know what's really fun is like when I go to edit an episode and I'm like, oh, that, we didn't have too many mistakes when we recorded that from my memory. That's going to be easy. And I open it up and there's 62 marks and I'm like, well, it'll either be that or the bunk. very opposite. You'd be like, wow, there's like 25 marks and you check out all of them. And you're like, they're all fine. Yeah, <laughs> that happens a lot. It <laughs> doesn't even matter. But uh, did you guys watch anything at all that you want to discuss? I did not. <laughs> Everything I watched is tied into what we're talking about tonight anyways. hey Yeah, Hey-o. like I said, trying to 100% Spider-Man and uh, watched uh, some Penn and Teller Fool Us clips on YouTube while pooping. And they were great. Um, if you want to have a good, if you want to have a really good poop, go to YouTube and search for Penn and Teller Fool Us. And there's some just great little uh, eight to 10 minute videos where you get amazed while you take a deuce. You guys ready to ready to jump in? Yeah, let's talk Dive about Dive on into the deep red end. The deep red end. <laughs> it's called deep red. Deep guys. red. Rosso profondo. Rosso profondo. Mi amor. Mi Ricardo. Amor. Profondo rosso. <laughs> um, this movie was great. Yes. I, 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 really, I love it. It was, just, it was just like immediate. They were just like, hey, um, did you want a hook? Well, we got one for you. Yeah, pretty as much. As soon as the movie starts. Yeah, it's literally the first thing you see before the titles even come up. Just the child like playing with the Christmas tree in the background, and then fucking sta- like the silhouette of a stabbing on the wall, projected onto the wall, yeah. and then bloody knife at his feet. With fucking children's music playing in the background, just that. la 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 la. <laughs> like what was it? It's yeah. so crazy. It reminds me so much of the other like uh, movie that we watched, The Crystal Plumage. We're like la 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 la, and it just la, 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 la. oh well, Dan. I don't know if you watched that one. Did you watch? I didn't. No, it doesn't matter. You, you would hate it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. it's not as fun as this. Yeah, but uh, it just the music. Like it's crazy. Like the music themes like that make you think of like how we got to themes just in horror movies oh yeah yeah as well for sure. like the modern like, musical themes yeah. oh no if this so much of the music in this seemed seemed influential of like a lot of different genres like when they're like panning over uh uh the the killer's desk with all the stuff on it and everything um like mm. mm-hmm. that see that seemed like something straight out of uh, one of the like the new Netflix, you know, crime, uh, yeah, totally like, real life crime, crime shows. Yeah, yeah. a um, lot of the music was wild as fuck too. And it was, was so misplaced. <laughs> it was so cool, and then went on doing the same thing for so yeah. long, and like so many scenes where it literally nothing is happening yeah. and it's just like it's <laughs> yeah. like what the well, it's fuck just like prog rock shit there's so much oh going my God. on in that music yeah it was Goblin, d- it was fuck, super fuck. cool it was super cool i mean i love yeah. that music but then yeah after like fucking what seemed like three hours of him climbing on a facade maybe it was probably only <laughs> like it was still three minutes like, it was still like three or four minutes of him yeah s- safely climbing down I yeah, mean, there Chase, was, there was Chase five... said this is pretty much the, the movie where everything happens in real time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, it's real it's like, time. Again. Oh, he 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 accidentally fell, and uh, we didn't call cut, so he's just, he'll just <laughs> climb down, go back we'll up. Reset. We'll reset. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> when he fell for the first time, 
you just kept going. Oh, every time something weird happened, you kept going, cut, cut, <laughs> yeah, cut. You're the director. Cut, cut, cut. cut. David, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Also, There's the a main, lot of those. The main character. This. Come on, everybody. That's that's our young Trump right there, and then we got we got a little bit of Paul McCartney sprinkled in as well, and a little <laughs> bit of James Spader. It's a little bit it's, of it's James very, Spader, Paul McCartney, and Donald strange. Trump. It's David uh, Hemmings, I, man. He was celebrated at the time. I like the psychology professor who's like, uh, what what did I say? He was, uh, oh God, Tim damn Curry. It. No, oh yes, it was yes, it was it was Tim Curry <laughs> mixed with Javier Bardem. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. A little widened at the face. Yeah. <laughs> so many people in these movies just resemble modern actors. Like in com- every like in com- so many movies yeah. that we watch. We literally just see it. We're because we're just fucking Because they're they're the people we're used to, yeah. Yeah. We're just like, oh, I see his face in that oh, guy's face. <laughs> He's a in a movie. But the striking <laughs> resemblances between some of these people. It's striking in some of them. But like a lot of the times it just looks like Bizarro Paul Rudd and like yeah, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> which is like an alternate version, like universe version of those people. Yeah, they're like the B movie versions of all the A list actors. It's funny. I feel like there's like two Bizarro Paul Rudds for every other like doppelganger we find. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a lot of Bizarro Paul Rudds. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of dads out there that are Bizarro Paul Rudds. Yeah. Yeah, this one guy, literally I was uh, at the bike shop the other day, and I can't remember the actor's name that this guy looked like, so I went outside, and I was like, hey, man, like, you look like someone famous. Who does everyone say you look like? And he's like, oh, like, looks at his wife. He was a cool guy. Like, he wasn't a weird or anything. He was like a dad. But he was just like, oh, my God. Like, looks at his wife and, like, all his kids, and they're like, ah. And he's like, I get Paul Rudd. And I was like, oh. Well, no. <laughs> That's not it at all. <laughs> You're like, no, I, 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 well, I can't think of it. Well, thank you. Goodbye. Have a good day. <laughs> then you're just like, uh, no, Steve Buscemi. That's it. And you walk away. But it was it was a much like bigger guy like that I was thinking. Because the guy was like, like kind of a little more hulky. But like in his face, I could see where they were saying Paul Rudd. But I was like doesn't even register with this body that you got going yeah. on. Like, <laughs> Let's see. I want somebody completely different. <laughs> I want the follow-up on how shook he was when he got home, like, secretly. Like, like when, he, like, didn't show his family, but, like, that you were like, oh, no. Yeah. He was like, was like damn, I shouldn't have got so big. Every, everybody <laughs> says I look like Paul Rudd. <laughs> Just, like, sitting in his fucking trophy room with his fucking football trophies all around. Yeah. Just nah. He just man, commits lost the rud. in front of a whole bunch of pictures of Paul Rudd. Ay, Paul Rudd. Spookoost. He can't live with himself anymore. Hey, <laughs> Oh my god. Edison. <laughs> All right, so yeah. this this movie is uh, pretty much considered the best of the genre. Um. That's fun. It yeah. was a very good time. It's hilarious. That makes that it's the best as well. Like well, that makes sense, but also he's like drawn out oh. parts. <laughs> <laughs> he's drawn out parts. Like you can't like. I can't tell if things are really part of the genre or it's people just fucking up, and it's like <laughs> hilarious. But like <laughs> no, but if you just say that's part of the genre, then exactly no, part of the genre. <laughs> but if you watch enough of these by different people, they all. Do it. You see yeah, that exactly. they all fuck up, <laughs> in the, but the same specific details. Yeah. Okay. I, I can I can see it being a thing with that's very funny. Like because there's because like definitely we, meant to be. Funny. That's what the comedy is today. Yeah. Like it's going on too long, but like I don't know, just little nuances. It's like can the, go so far. You're definitely meant to laugh at some of this shit. Like I mean, I'm sure there's a couple moments where you're like we were laughing and it wasn't. Intention, completely intentional, but like a lot of it is purposeful. They want you to just have fun. Hey, something that um, doesn't really work now that is more just a comedy for then, and something that you're just um, when he toasts the possible raping of someone, when he toasts <laughs> oh someone's possible God. a possible oh, yeah. rape yeah. victim. Here's That's to you, crazy. 
rape virgin rape yeah. virgin i believe yeah. is what it said yeah it was that guy that guy's a weirdo that guy Yikes. got that guy got killed in a pretty uh uh great way oh though. my no wait yeah. no we just we, let's should, i feel like we should wait even just yeah to we'll just talk it about later. that because that's <laughs> it's so oh my god i <laughs> oh my god like this movie also felt like wet hot american summer Oh, totally. Like, like, just, oh, my God. It was just so... <laughs> talking about Paul Rudd, like... <laughs> <woo>. <laughs> um, dude, they had some killer zooms in this. Yes. Yeah. Um, right before, like, right when they hear uh, the woman... Scream, when they hear Helga scream out on the street, um, and it, do, it does, like, a... Like, it must have been, like, a 300-millimeter zoom, at least. Yeah. Like, in, fr- in so from, like, a tr- in from, like, what would have been on them, like, a 20, like, a medium shot or Trump. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It tricks you. It makes you think you're looking at, like, a 24 or 50-millimeter, like, shot where they're, like, relatively close to the people, and then you realize they're, like, across the plaza. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, where's the, where's that, like, zoom shot where it goes from inside of... Uh, like that pavilion and you're like scooting out and you like see the sky and then you see above like the pavilion and then you go outside of the pavilion like do you remember that like fucking yeah. zooming out shot like we literally were like oh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like he it was so fucking insane i think it was like two shots it, cut together it's where i said it like looked animated yeah like it looked so fucking crazy i was like what the hell is going on with these cameras in this movie <laughs> Dude, really good like camera the, work <laughs> yeah. really good well, really good and really good like transit there was a really good transition like transition transition right after that the transition right after that perfect transition oh my god <laughs> The theater, the Russian theater in Moscow. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> right after they like uh, review everything at the theater with the police and shit, um, and then, um, god damn it, what's her name? The the reporter. Oh, uh, Ju- uh, oh, god damn it! It's not Juliana. Is it Juliana or Giovanni? No, it's some. We- it's it's something weird. Giovanni. Which also, also just the dubbing. <laughs> just the real quick, the dubbing in this. Like it was good. It was better dubbing than like it, we've seen in one of the Jalo films. I think, yeah, so far. It got, I think I it know got what better. You're say. <laughs> but 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 it was just so strange. Gianna. Like these American voices coming Gianna. from like Italians, and like it made it feel like more. It was really weird. The only one that you could tell it was their actual voice was David Hemmings was the the main guy, which I yeah. think is yeah, the yeah. most hilarious part. That it's still just a tad off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah. I'm just like perfect. Jesus fucking Christ. Like this genre is so fucking well, funny. It's all no, no, that, movies, dude. That's all that's Italian better movies. because if his was oh, if his yeah. was spot on and theirs was all it. off, it would have looked Why? way worse. It would have looked so much worse though if that? they were all if his was spot on. It's cheaper. Yeah, there's <laughs> no way. What that doesn't make. You can just wow. Wow. shooting <laughs> shooting on film and recording audio at the same time on set live oh, is yeah. way more expensive than just like ha- not recording sound at okay. all and having actors yeah. come in and dub it in later. That's okay. So yes. Much yes. Cheaper. Yes. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm so oh, sorry. No, no, no. I thought you meant. I thought you just meant like, I don't, doing it poorly. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 it's, no. Not, it, it's not it's, it's not good ADR. No, no, it's done poorly uh by design eventually with these movies, but okay. if you go back to like cert like 50s, 60s, it was just like bad ADR. Kyle I mean, Daly yeah. told me one Watch time when we movie. were in college that he uh that that's how movies are made. Uh like these days still. Like he's like no, dude, like every movie well, definitely. they go and like just record in a studio. Definitely. They don't do it for every scene, but they yeah. definitely do it for every movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I know that. But he was <laughs> yeah. saying every scene of every movie. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, it's like, it, there's no, like, live recording of voices. It's oh, just like, no, that's not accurate. And I was like, oh, God, no. That would be so fucking grueling. Yeah. No, that's not how they do it now. <laughs> they definitely so anyway, do scenes, <laughs> but not every scene. <laughs> That scene transition I was talking about, um, when they're in the theater and everything, uh, the female reporter, whatever her name is, comes forward uh, and she's like, "What kind of movement? Like, what kind of movement did you see in the in the audience when uh, when Juliana was like having her little, or uh, when Helga was having her little conniption fit or whatever?" Um, she was a psychic. and then, and and yeah, and then like, at, well, the movement that he saw was the movement of the person leaving, and then the camera's just like and like leaves and like 
like yeah, yeah, tracks yeah. around back of him and leaves and it, like that was just beautiful <laughs> it, it was so good <laughs> All, all the photography in this is is great. This is a great example of like, like because of uh, Blood and Black Lace does uh, its cinematography is good, but it didn't shine like it does here. And this is kind of like the example for the genre. Like a lot more of these movies look like deep red than they do like Blood and Black Lace. Mm-hmm. I'm doing double thumbs up right now on what Chase is saying. Blood, <laughs> Blood and Black up. Lace was so fucking gorgeous, though. Oh, for sure. And I would say that Argento really takes the color aspect of Blood and Black Lace and then just goes fucking balls to the wall with it. Dude, up to takes 11, it to 11. On Suspiria. Literally, when uh, Carlo and David Herring, what's his fucking name? Hemmings, David Hemmings. David Hemmings. What's his name in the film? Um, Marcus. Mar- Marcus. Marcus something. and uh, Marcus Carlo. Daly. Like Kyle Daly. When they're fucking just like walking through this, it literally just looks like a studio with like some buildings and like they have that painting in the background with like, you know, the diamond. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, pretty much. Uh, The shadows, when they're together the entire time, like walking through out just like these city streets, I think even later, them just walking around. The shadow work is fucking insane. And even later on, do you remember when uh, Marcus is talking to someone? It might be Carlo. And all the women are literally lined up diagonally down the road. Did you notice that, Dan? Like, No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole scene. And they're standing there talking, and then there's this line of women. Per- like, it's perfectly, like, placed. It, it's definitely for just, like, yeah. the composition of the shot. It has, shot. like, them in the, the two men talking, like, and in the shadows. They're in- and then there's just a light, and it's just going diagonally down. down and then there's these women in front of the windows all the way down and then one standing like right in the middle of the street and they're moving just barely barely well the one at the very back is on constantly back moving forth. around and like staring at the actors and then looking around and like but all the other ones are relatively just like still they just stay really what? still they Dude, don't it's move. crazy it's crazy yeah. as and fuck it, it's totally just for the shot it's oh, totally it's amazing. Just, like but there's like, no reason those while. women are there. Yeah, but it's a long and then the camera it's all under. The camera like swings around them and they go walk off. Yeah. Um, the shadow work when they're walking off yeah. is moving where it's just like every single every single part of it just looks like it could you could just take a still shot and like it'd be a beautiful fucking painting. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm just like, holy shit, this is crazy. <laughs> They're like moving the lights with them as they walk and stuff, and it looks fan fucking tastic. Yeah, that whole sequence is amazing. A I'll lot take of these, screenshots a, a lot of movies post. that like look like they're in studios, but like use the aspect of it looking like a studio where it's just like they're just fucking doing crazy studio <laughs> shit. Yeah, <laughs> like those movies are crazy. Like you know, obviously, uh, like all that jazz does that fucking crazy. Where like kind of looks like you're in a studio the whole time, like because yeah. just because the dream sequences and it's using lighting and all this crazy stuff, and uh, th- this movie obviously does it a lot more mildly and still very artistically. But there's a lot of I don't it's know, like, even like bit. Cook his uh, the cook, cook the thief, his yeah. wife and her lover. That fucking movie looks like it's on a set and still oh, like that movie's like so obviously on a set. Yeah, I know. I'm just set. saying, like it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Like all these. Movies that I've never fucking heard of and seen, <laughs> but because of this podcast, <laughs> I get to enjoy all this shit. It's like so prominent in all these just fucking awesome films. It's just, it was just interesting like, pattern to I, see. I love seeing movies that utilize the studio that's th- by not trying to hide that they're in a studio, but just like by making the most like compositionally complex image that they can. Yeah, exactly. Um, so and it like does it to the point where it doesn't even matter that they're obviously in a studio. It just the image itself is gorgeous yeah yeah it's fantastic film fantastic film (laughs) fantastic uh what about the telepathy at the very beginning how it's all fucking scanners and shit i like oh uh, did you mention that i mentioned that yeah yeah so grave of cronenberg directly said the opening scene where she's talking to the audience about the psychic abilities is like this the head explosion scene in scanners that's where it comes from yeah. It's like from that that scene. It's perfect. He based sense. all of it around that. Yeah, I was like, "That's awesome," and totally makes sense. It's almost shot for shot. <laughs> I really liked <laughs> her. Like Helga in that scene reminded me of like Mel Brooks women. 
like women in Mel Brooks films, <laughs> yeah. like in, in totally. like Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles. Saddles, yeah, specifically yeah. those two. Yeah. So yeah. fucking yeah. awesome. This, oh no, oh, oh god, no. Yeah, very exaggerated. <laughs> so good. yeah, I Makes love me that. Think of, like the girl from Monty Python as well, just her being. the just the only the girl, girl ever. Like, <laughs> we'll just read my stuck Mr. Bob Harris. Mr. Bob Harris, no. No, Mr. Bob Harris. Uh, lost in translation. <laughs> <laughs> reap, uh, reap my stucking. Lip, lip them. Which is like, I could feel it. It's a terrible death. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> She's like swatting it. She's like, go away. It was like a thorn <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> worse, much worse. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I loved that. Oh, I, guess I was like, this series amazing. Immediately, I love it. <laughs> it honestly reminded me a little bit of the opening scene to uh, The Brood. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yes, for sure. Yes, for yes. sure. But uh, yeah, it's uh, again like uh, another Cronenberg. Cronenberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He definitely was inspired by this movie, I'd say. Yeah, um, absolutely. So how about right after Marcus and uh, reporter arm wrestle, yeah. um, moderately attractive people flirting like they're the sexiest people in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, they're just, they're, even moderately they're attractive, attractive people each other. have to, you know, express themselves. Yeah, but Jesus they were just Christ, going dude. real hard at it. Yeah. You're a monster. But do you think attractive people actually even flirt with each other that hard? No, probably think, not. But it was just it was just it. it was just very funny and awkward and like real. It was just really so you real. Go, <laughs> so you wanna go home and fuck or what? It was just too real, you know? It's like very, very hit, real. Hit, hit too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> These movies are starting to speak to you, Dan. <laughs> It's going to be a problem when we start talking about the inherent sexism and mis uh, misogyny of the genre. <laughs> Which, not, not too much sex in this movie. Uh, like, none, right? <laughs> none. None. I'm pretty sure a lot of it got cut out. I'm sure yeah, sex out. with a nun. Um, sex with a nun. Yeah. That happens later. Yeah, did you guys see that nun movie? It's super awesome. I was about to, yeah, no, I haven't, seen, I, haven't, I haven't seen that nun movie. I'm not yeah, gonna see it. It's in the Conjuring universe. Have you guys? I've watched. All Never the mind. <laughs> Let's not talk about those. Those are unfortunate. Um, <coughs> so this movie came out after the most prolific era of Jalo, <clears throat> which was uh, generally considered to be 71 to 73. Literally in that time, in those three years, <laughs> there were uh, over 65 Jalo films made just in those three years. Yeah, that's fantastic. But like the whole genre lasts from about 63 to 78, the heyday being about 68 to 78. Obviously, Argento kind of like made it worldwide popular. But after he did Bird with the Crystal Plumage, 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 then it kind of blew up. But this is pretty much considered the height of his career. And there's several other movies that are up there with it, but this is the height of the genre. I would argue Tenebrae is actually a little better, but it's Tenebrae, right? Because it, is it Tenebrae? Is, it's like, is it like vertebrae, but like ten? Like, what is it saying? Well, it's a Latin <laughs> word. It's a Latin <laughs> word, and it's like part of the Catholic religion. And I'm okay. not a hundred percent sure what it means. Jordan explained it to me, and I honestly was really high and just like zoned out. Oh, well, is uh, it ten or is it like ten? Wait, Tenebrae. Yeah, and I went to Catholic school. Ten, you said Tenebrae, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's when you suck a little boy's dick. Oh shit! Well, that's not what the oh. movie's about. <laughs> no, that's no, that's what it is. It's the Catholic Church, right? And yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's when you suck a little boy's dick. And that was <laughs> that was your favorite Jalo film. <laughs> Honestly, Chase. though. The, Whoa! Ee, that's not what the movie was about. It's not what the movie was about. Um, that's Tenenbrae, dude. I went to Catholic hey, school. That's Tenenbrae, was, okay? Was like I know what Tenenbrae is. Just, just, you think just, I don't know what Tenenbrae is? Hey, listen, hey, you, don't have, listen Dan, you don't have to defend Dan. yourself. Chase wants to suck guys' dicks fine with me. What? <laughs> Fuck you guys. It's okay with me, too. I'm still coming for Halloween, and now I'm coming for Halloween. Now you're coming on Halloween. It's just, oh. Tenenbrae just means that... <laughs> 
in the last three no, days it of means Holy Week. Like, don't listen to that liberal bullshit. Candles are successively bullshit. extinguished. Don't this listen to that Jewish liberal. Shalo. It's a Jewish shalo for Christians. Whoa. What? <laughs> it's Catholic. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. The movie, the movie is a lot like In the Mouth of Badness meets Deep Red. So if you guys like those movies, love, you'll like Tin and Bray. Love. I can't. I literally this Halloween season, I'm gonna be watching In the Mouth of Madness again. I need some weird John Carpenter back in my life. Yes, they're releasing all of the '80s movies in 4K for October. It's fucking amazing. Gonna watch them all. They're gonna be in theaters. Do you think they'll have those at a red box? What? <laughs> what? They're gonna yeah. put them back in theaters. They're putting the thing. This is such Prince a funny, of Darkness. Funny sketch. Ooh. If I can go up to a red box. What? No Criterion collection? <laughs> that's you guys great because I was Criterion. That's perfect because I was gonna I was I tried to watch the thing the other night and fell asleep and now I just won't bother watching it right now and I'll go to the theater and watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. in October when it comes back out yeah. on 4K. Trying to get the director's cut of Black Rainbow. Where the hell is this shit? Beyond the Black Rainbow? <laughs> Ever heard of it, Walmart? God <laughs> damn it. Can't got find a goddamn good art film anywhere in this town. God damn it! I scrounge for art. <laughs> My name's Pete. <laughs> so, uh, how about that woman getting hacked and her body turning to candy, <laughs> just breaking like glass? It was just like, oh, is she oozing? Like, I she looks yummy. Oh, that was your first thought. <laughs> yeah, I thought that like someone. It was, she was like made of like thick Tootsie Roll. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? What are these effects? This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. Um, I thought it was awesome. That That's the same scene where he throws her and breaks her head through the glass and like stabs her neck through the pane of glass. It's the hell yeah. kill. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, when he okay. comes in through the door and he like just like splits her open with the cleaver like a couple yeah, times. Yeah, dude, that was fucking yeah. brutal. Was, that first know, hit. Was, Oh, so fucking brutal that first one. It's like, oh god, dude. Oh, they god. had a lot so of I brutal. Each each kill, you were just like, oh fuck, dude. Like yeah. every single time, they good he, kills. Apparently, uh, Argento and uh, Bernardo Zapponi, who wrote the script, um, sat around and just like thought of different ways to kill people that didn't just try nec- to one up each other. <laughs> well, that didn't necessarily involve knives or guns because no one can like empathize with what it actually feels like to be stabbed or shot because most people don't get stabbed or shot. But a lot of people will feel their face being thrown into the corner of a fucking mantelpiece. Yeah, or a lot yeah. of people or know what like an intense being, burn feels. Yeah, like. like what a burn feels like. Oh. That whole sequence, or what it being drugged feels like across the ground. Yeah, I thought and that so, was interesting too. Yeah, they were like trying to make us feel the kills as much as they could. Dude, um, when she was, uh, who was that? That was the psychologist. She was uh, like curb stomping over and over and over again, uh, just like on the mantelpiece, just oh, like slamming yeah. his teeth. Like, oh, yeah, God. Was such so precision. Yeah. It was just, like, yeah, oh I know, God, right? It was like so American. Funny. That was like on the level of American History X curb stomp. Lo- oh yeah, a lot I, every of time control I see there. a curb stomp, I think of that. Oh, oh, oh. So like when uh, David is in <laughs> David Herring. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus is with Carlo David in like the alleys and like it's supposed to be Rome, I think. They're in Rome, I believe. Yeah, which is super weird yeah. and just yeah, looks yeah. like a studio the whole time. And uh, all the lighting is so fucking gorgeous and they have that painting in the background. Looks great. Love it. There's so much work in those scenes <laughs> that is like fucking incredible with the lighting and just... it. F- the fluctuation just looks like I'm just going to repeat everything that I said. <laughs> yes. I can't do this. Let's, just, tell, let's just talk. Yeah, let's okay. just talk. We're, we're well, I, I, did, I, did wanna, I did want to hit on the point, of, uh, though, uh, we were talking about um, that, yeah, there was a little fuck up in the closet where, like, uh, th- they had the, the killer had blue eyes instead of brown eyes, where they had brown eyes when they were putting all in the makeup, the eyeliner and shit. Yeah. And... And I said it was a red herring. Yeah, and I'm just saying that, like, you could say anything's a fucking red herring then, but, like, is there re- what's, what is the reason, Chase? What is the real reason behind having <laughs> these fuck-ups? That you can just have these fuck-ups where it's just, like, what? It's, it's, it shows one thing in one scene, and then it shows the same thing as something else in another. 
Okay, so most... Uh, okay, you're either in the perspective of a victim, of a wit of the a witness who's being drugged into the crime and like in into like a paranoid state or the killer themselves and who's usually insane and uh so like the narr- like the style of it like all these fuck ups are c- so consistent across the genre because it's like you're with an unreliable narrator essentially at every step of the way and I guess so, just- like they're constantly fighting against their own like memories of events and like just I mean, any any eyewitness is like an un- not necessarily reliable like yeah s- yeah I, I read some the most, po- most policemen don't take, exactly don't take uh, much you know uh, alliance to the people of the world and listen to them <laughs> yeah apparently <What>? not. <laughs> And it's why just are like you? Why are you? All these eyewitnesses, not not they're not seeing shit, you know. And I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, most of these eyewitnesses ain't seeing Same shit because they ain't snitches. No, there's know? a lot of dumb people out there, okay? And they see they see shit and they just fucking they're like, I'm gonna get on TV. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, yes. But yeah, but the, the important thing is, movies, don't be a snitch. Yeah, well, like in the bird with the crystal plume. Still plumage, get on TV though. The bird with the crystal plumage, the main character, um, he like witnesses a crime and then the whole movie he's being constantly being re like asked to revisit his memory of the crime and try to remember something that he feels like he missed or like that he saw, but he like doesn't remember correctly. So he's constantly fighting against his own memory until the very end when you find out like he, the way he thought he witnessed the crime was actually flawed and like what he actually saw was something else. Well, I mean, he realized that, in the, uh, Marcus realized that in in this movie as well. He re- he like yeah. He thought that a painting had been removed from the house, and he was so sure of it, and thought like that it must lead in some other direction. It must be like some conspiracy or something. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, but then in fact, it was a mirror there all along. Which when wasn't. they first passed by, I was like, "Who the fuck's that?" I was like, "Who's that bitch?" Yeah. I saw that too, and I was like, "What?" It, but it makes you question as an audience. This movie in particular makes you question as an audience member what you saw in that scene if you're really paying attention. Yeah, I was Especially like, is that Lucille the- too? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yes. <laughs> totally. Oh, it's funny. Buster's hiding somewhere around there. <laughs> uh, but those Mother. paintings... Mother! Mother! <laughs> the paintings... And, well, and that's funny because it's the mother in the movie who does all the killing. Um, it's like Gangi too. <laughs> um, the paintings in that hallway are uh, uh, fucking crazy. Like yeah, all the, yeah, that's true. The ghosts and skeletons and shit. And then the, when he sees her in the mirror, and they like show it to you at the end, and you see her face like blending in with those pa- that painting, it like it's perfect. <laughs> her face like blends into all the like fucking death that that painting has. <laughs> that shit's fucking insane. Yes. Oh my god, that hallway with all those paintings. What the fuck? It's awesome. Absolutely amazing. I love that shit so much. Um, also, like all these movies are having women killers. Every every single genre yeah. film that I've seen so far, the one of the women Kills. most of the time there's only one woman. <laughs> it's like the killer. Yeah. Um there's only two Jalo films I've seen where the men are killers. I thought that was the thing. The I 80s. thought that was I thought that was one of the things. I thought the men were the killers usually. No, I think they're mostly women. But like I haven't, but it I haven't, brings, I didn't it read brings that a, talked about though. Like I guess it's that's just that's not part of the genre. But they just did it. And they didn't they didn't incorporate that into the genre. Well, it's a point. I didn't know they do. It's a point of criticism in the genre. It's actually, but okay. So now, oftentimes, and a lot of the ones that we've watched, the men are the witnesses. Um, but in a lot of these, the women are the witnesses and they're the killers, excuse me. And it brings about this trope of like the hysterical woman, the, the insane woman, you know, and she's, mm-hmm. she's acting out of these, like, uh, these womanly, uh, uh, estrogen inter- rages, yeah, internal <laughs> like motivations, yeah, so which is that a man super wrote. sexist. <laughs> <Yes>. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and, but then a lot of times they will be the protagonist and the protagonist will act in a like counterproductive way often. Um, and you see that in like, like an opera, Argento's opera, the, the fucking protagonist 
does nothing to help herself. <laughs> she's, she, I mean, she's kind of an idiot, which is, you know, sexist in its own way. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's given us great, great, great movies like Jason X. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween 2. Scream. I know what you did last summer. Halloween 4 with Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> A Bay of Blood is essentially, I know what you did last summer, the movie in the 70s. Sick. It's sick. It's sick. There's seven decapitations. When was the first I know you did last summer? Wasn't that like... In the a, 90s. In the 90s. Like 94. Four, Didn't they like make five, another one? Four or five? Yeah, they made like three or more. Maybe Didn't six. I want to like say some six. Fucking bullshit in like 2007 or some shit. And you're like, no, well, not that yeah. late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that didn't happen. Okay. I think th- I think they made a sequel, but I think it was out by the millennium. Hmm. I would honestly say even like Final Destination has like in it a, a root in this genre. It's like I feel like this inspires a lot. Yeah, like oh, yeah, even sure. if even if not overtly, like this has it reaches its roots into a lot of stuff. Well, like exactly, and like this, like Blood and Black Lace, like apparently established this notion. But like the idea of the body count, you go into these movies expecting a body count. So there's like so many characters that get introduced that are there to be killed, and then they function as red herrings as to who the killer might be. And then they get killed and like eliminate themselves. And there's this like body count aspect to it where you're like, you expect a certain amount of people to die. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that has like a, a hardcore influence on like the Final Destination series or, or Slasher. Slasher is the same way where you have like an expectation of a certain amount of people are going to get killed. Okay. So when Paul McCartney is playing piano and he's doing his weird blues shit and then he hears like the killer pretty much coming in. And he just keeps on playing. He's scared as shit. And yep. he like fucking when he gets to the door and closes the door, and the fucking voice at the door is like, "Last time you're safe. Yeah, like I'll get you sooner or later." It's fucking haunting, it's scary. dude. Like that voice is so terrifying every time it comes up. <laughs> it was and like, so scary. <laughs> The other two times, two or three times it comes up, I have to rewind to hear what it says actually because I was just like. Wait, what? <laughs> but it was like it was still terrifying. Dude. Like, oh wait, it excuse is. me. <laughs> it's like a fucking snakey snake. And I'm like, who the hell like that woman? No, I'm sure that was some like voice artist like doing Oh that. no, I'm just saying like the movie was yeah. the movie trying to say that this woman is doing yeah, this? I, yeah. Yeah, that that was one of the biggest suspensions of disbelief things is those like, nah. It's like, well, she don't it, have the it's range. It's the funniest shit ever. Her being revealed as the killer cuz she just turns around and you're like, "Oh, like, <laughs> it's the old what woman." What the hell? <laughs> look, her body looks completely different. Doesn't it look like it would it, like it's a man clearly. I'm pretty sure it's Argento. Yeah, it's Argento uh, himself doing all the like hand close-ups and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he did that in. And it, it's movies. so. F- I thought it was hilarious. And I, when she turned around, I was like, "Oh, oh, I really, I, it, wow." <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, hi. The idea being that. Do you? <laughs> the idea being that uh, it's it. You know, every time you see the killer, it's from some fucking unreliable narrator. Yeah, who's like misperceiving the situation that's yeah, how they get away with awesome. all these shit that's awesome i love shit. that shit that's like that uh that batman cartoon do you remember you talking about that that one time there's like a batman uh like four-part series where it's all just a movie it's little glimpses of different like universe batmans and there's one where these kids are telling stories about batman oh yeah 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 the, the like and the animatrix batman thing I don't think it's an- what animation. D- d- never mind. Keep going. No, doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes, Gotham Knight. I think is what it was called. Yes, Gotham Knight is what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. There is like anime like styles of it as well. Yeah. yeah. But you know how like the Animatrix is like a series of different. It's a little bunch of little vignettes about the Matrix. Yeah. It's a bunch of different vignettes about Batman in the si- in si- a similar style. Like there's different animation styles. Some of them are computer animation, but they're all like anime style. Yeah. Yeah. So how this is similar is that storyline is four kids telling their own perception of Batman, like in stories. Yeah. So like they'll animate Batman how that child is perceiving Batman. Yeah. And so it's like four different like Batman. Yeah, that, four like, different versions that of that you're Batman. seeing. And yeah. it's like 
fucking like some of them are just literally a fucking bat. Like a huge fucking evil bat with wings. It's like <laughs> fucking sick. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Yeah, and that's kind of like how they get away with doing like honestly just cutting the corners in these movies. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, yeah, like they see, can that... write the plot however they want and then film it however they want and then it make it can make sense, quote unquote. Yeah. I would that... like to see it go more evil though, instead of just always being a man in a mask. And that, that's that's where I take issue. It's just like it's like where is the line of like, and that's just the thing is like they can push the line where kind of wherever they want it to be of like, what is like, oops, dude, we forgot to hire a brown eyed person today, or like, oh well, let's just have a blue eyed person do it because it'll be like unreliable witness that like where is it like did they just fuck up and they're just like ah dude no 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 it, it, it it's motivated it's cool it's motivated it, well it depends it's it depends a little bit on of the both. filmmakers you know like both. I don't know enough about these people <laughs> so Argento himself I would say motivated most of it there might be a couple slips in especially in this movie later on Argento. It's a completely different story. Uh, but like at Deep Red, like he was doing, he, like in this movie specifically, I'd say nine times out of 10, it was intentional. But, and it was either intentional for dramatic effect or for just like, that's going to be a fucking great shot. And I want that shot kind of thing. But like it, he knew what he was doing here. I would say that's true for some more of these movies, but not a lot of these movies. I'd say there's a lot of lesser filmmakers making films that were just like, this is an easy way to make a cheap movie and, yeah. oh, and yeah, get a profit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the B slasher film came for me. Yeah. 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 You well, got, the you original B slasher films are good. fucking doing this shit. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Joe D'Amato, which his movie is Joe D'Amato. Joe D'Amato. <laughs> Joe D'Amato. D Amato. Okay. So, um, creepy red haired girl. Oh, creepy yeah. little redhead fucking stabbing lizards it's lizards <laughs> with the pins so weird okay that was, yeah, that was crazy it was weird like i didn't know again i was like is the film fucking up and like being weird or is like that when i saw the pin in the lizard and it's just dangling around i was like is that pin supposed to be visible <laughs> i was yeah. like think, think it, what? thinking ba- yeah. yeah no so thinking confused. back on it and having watched it because tw- i watched it again at work uh, second time i watched it i wasn't as present because <laughs> i was at work uh, no, no, no. I watched it. I watched it last night. It was very present. I loved it. And then I watched <laughs> yeah. it again today because I was like, I fucking want to watch it again before I fucking talk about it. It's <laughs> fucking dope. Um, still don't understand what the fuck was that. Why? Why? Chase, tell me now. Now, this is the part where Chase tells me why the little girl did that. Why did the little girl do that, Chase? Why did she stab the lizard? Please tell me, Chase. I'm so upset. She- because she's a little girl who, you know, it's like burning an ant for a little girl who's just like fucking with the lizards and being. That's a, another a little, level, bro. Being a little dick. She's being a little dick. And she saw that drawing at school and she's like, you know what? I'm kind of dark. I feel dark things. You know, I like this. And then she's just like the goth girl. She's a little goth girl in town. Dude, lizards. lizards I know. Is another it's fucked level. up. It's fucked up. Lizards but is another level, bro. It's the 70s, too, though. You know, it's no, the no, no, 70s, dude. Man. No, dude. That dad knows what's up. That dad was like, she's fucked up, bro. She's fucking killing lizards. Oh, yeah. Why is she fucked? Why is she fucked up? Okay. The dad he, might have had something oh, no. to do with that. The, the dad's not a clearly not a good fellow. He's not a good <laughs> fellow. But like, she's sticking pens through lizards, bro. I, I'm not excusing the behavior. It's fucking horrible. I love lizards. I can't. I touch just them, But I. Love I was just them. hoping. I was just hoping you had a more like. No, I think it was just film a related psycho- reason. I think it was a purely psychological character choice. Uh, the lizard's yeah. evil. That, that served like an she image. Evil? The image is was the bizarre. dad evil? Are okay. we evil? <laughs> is everyone evil? Is humanity just evil in Chase, nature? Tell us. Yes, I think that might be what he was trying to say. <laughs> let's just fucked, let's basically. just let's just say he was. we're all fucked, <laughs> or at least all women. You know what? Yeah. We can get to the, any point that we want if we really try hard. I mean, you can figure anything you out. You, you could make a, f- a feminist point out of this movie <laughs> with Gianna and her fucking, like, 
let's let's arm wrestle thing and she beats the shit out of him and he's just like so oh it's fantastic his his, pr- his pride is so wounded it's great so wounded she's a badass and like thought she was the killer uh for a second there yeah the yeah film. when they pan oh, up yeah. on her like when he's like laying or wakes up in her lap yeah. and shit after he yeah. gets hits in the after he gets hit in the head yeah I was like, and Jordan said at the beginning, she was like, it's her. Yeah. She wears the I, eyeliner I, just like the killer. Like when she, when you see the eyeliner. The, yeah, the no, I thought yeah. that too. And they showed her. It's the all red herring. I can't remember what, uh, yeah, this, these films really try to throw you off. Yeah. Intentionally. Uh, which, so. is, which is Many cool. times. I like that. But I, it wasn't the makeup. I can't remember what scene that I was thinking, uh, that she was probably the killer. Are you talking about right before she dies in the house? I don't think I think I think it's more so when she's uh, introduced. She is very like, huh, you know, um, are you suggesting she acted guilty? She She was (laughs) (laughs) she's a strong, independent woman. Okay, she can say whatever she wants. She's a murderer. (laughs) But she wasn't. But like, I'm conflicted. (laughs) But she made me think she was kind of guilty, you know? She seemed guilty. She just said guilty written all over. Right after that voice, though, as well, when that, that, you know, that creepy voice was like, yes, I'll get you sooner or later. Uh, Paul McCartney goes, uh, like, his girlfriend comes back in the house or something. What happens? I can't remember. I think she comes through the door. And uh, she's like, "What's wrong?" And he's like, "Oh, there's like someone trying to kill me or something." You know? He calls her. He calls <laughs> so, like yeah. he calls somebody he calls or somebody calls. Oh, yeah. No, somebody phone. calls. Yeah. Somebody calls him, and he picks up, and he's like, "I don't care who you are. Like, just listen. Like, there's somebody in my house is definitely trying to kill me. Just definitely, for sure, trying to kill me." <laughs> you know? You, like, you know? You know? <laughs> it's like you know? it's like casual as fuck. <laughs> They're definitely trying to kill me. You know? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, it's just one of those uh, they're trying to murder me sort of things, you know. There, I think they're in the house there. They uh, they popped on in, you know, and, and, uh, and yeah, they're really making themselves at home. Didn't even take their shoes off, just waiting at my door trying to kill me. Yeah. Well, I'm upstairs watching Modern Marvels, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, goddamn, I'm not even gonna try to do that accent. Just rap <laughs> on the door. <laughs> I'm just going to keep my pretty little mouth shut on that one. <laughs> He's a southern boy. Raised in the south, born in the south. Listen, to the mouth of that pretty, I'm going to need you to go ahead and open that Died right up. Yeah, the mouth of that go. pretty, a mouth of that pretty got to stay about, open. How about when it's like, let's go to the, the library. It's black legend time. Kabilly! And then they go, <laughs> and they start opening up old scrolls and crazy shit. <laughs> like old books. I don't think there's any scrolls in line. No, but uh, is there scrolls? No, 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 no yeah, I don't think so. I don't no think scrolls. So. No and scrolls. it's super Garth Marenghi. <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah. So Garth Marenghi, because I think there's even like a uh, like a monologue like overlay, and uh, it, the music by Goblin obviously is just fucking really honing in. <laughs> and, oh God! It's I'm just like this is directly from Garth Marenghi. Like, I mean, Garth Marenghi's Marenghi is definitely directly from this. <laughs> it's um. So how about Carlo with his Andy Samberg looking ass getting yeah. road hauled fucking to death mm-hmm. and then crushed? Yeah, and it's like it. It was like an accident. It was it was it was fucking hilarious. Like it felt like it was out of hot rod. Like he looked like Andy Samberg in it, and it felt like it was out of hot rod or like wet hot America or some one of those. Like that's hilarious. God damn it! I did like not think he, of that. He I got, was thinking it was like totally like a, one of like those Final Destination moments. That's yeah. That's the vibe I got from it. Just no, like being so silly. But like I, you thought even sillier, which is great. Like I love that. But uh, <laughs> because yeah, because funny. he's just like whoa 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 like he, okay because also the thing that grabs it like okay so he gets people are shooting at him police officers are shooting at him as he like escapes over a fence uh, a hedge and a fence and he gets out of the street and he's like whoa, and like looking back at him and like stumbles like onto the edge of the street and a garbage truck drives by and he like whoa, like knocks against it and then falls yeah. down to the ground. 
And then like an old timey like get off the stage vaudeville style cane grabs <laughs> yeah. his leg. Very silly. Attached to the Just fucking the garbage truck. Oh, yeah, that was it. Was so great. I I yeah. fucking loved it. And then I was like the whole time I was like his face is gonna get run over by a car. He's gonna get fucking hit by another car. Melon and, smashed. And, and yeah. then and then he, he fucking does. breaks his head on the fucking sidewalk, which is crazy. <laughs> and then he gets his face run over by a car. No, remember when they're turning and he's about yeah to exactly get his face smashed, and you're like oh, and then it's just like nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and you're yeah. Like, oh, no, no. We well, kind of like broke his neck. We just know, yeah, he like, just bounced into it. Like oh, he's gonna hit that pole or something, or like he's gonna hit the sidewalk. It was okay. Like, I thought it was just gonna nothing. chop his head it off. It was just like boom. Like, I was like, oh, <laughs> god damn it. All okay, right, let's keep on Also, going. Mis- oh, yeah, like misleading have- expectations things. When <laughs> um when the woman, before she gets scalded, um, when she gets her face slammed into the tile, and she, for, for one, wh- her face when she turns around after getting slammed into the tile, like, could be a, a gif, like a fucking world star fucking number one gif. <laughs> like, <and> she's like, <laughs> like, it looks like it's from goddamn as it, uh, she looks like Tom Hanks in an SNL skit somehow. Oh man, um, I have to like, watch the, it. The, the turnaround on that. But then also, there's literally, like, bloop, one drop of blood on the wall where she just got her face slammed into, like, full force. They put, like, bleep, like a pinky, just bleep, drop of blood. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so crazy. I don't remember this. I don't remember watching this film. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna rewatch that scene. God damn, to- um, twofer. God damn it. This movie um, was fucking great. The um, that whole that whole bathtub sequence is actually uh replicated in Halloween two or was an inspiration for a kill in Halloween two. Really? Yeah. There's like apparently a scene where he uses boiling water to like burn one of his victims to death, and John Carpenter got it from this movie. From the bathtub sequence, which is cool. That bathtub sequence is awesome. Fucking thief. Uh, Yeah, the motherfucking thief. Uh, That bathtub sequence is awesome, but at the end of it all, why the fuck does David Hemming's character walk into the apartment? What did I miss? Oh, yeah. How does he know her? Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Is that the third part of the 30 minutes that got cut out of the movie? Like how he's walking into that goddamn apartment? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, that's the that's the, like country estate he was looking for. I don't remember how he found it, but like that was the the lady that knew she was the connection to the house, to the creepy house. Okay. Right? Oh, I guess. Yeah. I it yeah, was lost. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't zoned know, out. I don't or... know how. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember how exactly, but I remember we she should, was the, was the she was the link to the the creepy house. Creepy house. Well, which um, then linked back to Carlos, which was yeah. No, we'll I, watch. We'll watch weird. this movie for the next four weeks and then <laughs> re-release it one once every. Listen week. to the fourth one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out by then. <laughs> God damn it! Um, <laughs> um, I I would like to talk about how uh, many different versions of this movie exist. Mm. And uh, how much of a shame that is, because I think the scene we were just talking about is uh, an example of something that was lost during the, you know, re-edits of the different versions of this movie. Um, I feel like there would have been more explanation. I don't think they would have just like kept us confused like that. Uh, And there's half an hour missing from about about from what we watched. Yeah, Um, he was a really good private eye like yeah right yeah <coughs> for a jazz pianist yeah for a jazz pianist he was a really good who seemed eye. clueless the entire time clueless but like he knew exactly what to do <laughs> but he's, he's, <laughs> he's just like i'm just floating along i just play the um, piano because i like to well some of us play the piano because we have to how about dr tim curry slash javier bardem's death scene where the was, little yeah. jigsaw runs in, yes, fucking yeah. jigsaw dummy runs in. Oh, oh my god. god! I was so happy that that, that was in this film. Yeah, like what? Great. Why? What? It made no sense, but I loved it. It was hilarious. It was wild, he, baby. He like I was it like he heard the song and then he thought the song was coming from the <laughs> the doll and when he kills like or breaks the doll the song well keeps that's playing, that and he's like but he just stands there and stares at it and it's like. Someone released 
the doll. No, yeah, no, he <laughs> like, stares what? at it, like, smiling, like, I, oh, there we go. That's that. All done. That was the, it was a doll trying to kill us the whole time. It already <laughs> murdered three people. I'm the hero. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are you doing? And then she just comes out from behind him. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. And then when she's shoving him to the corners, the only thing I could think was, that looks like it hurts. You kind of deserve it. <laughs> yeah. You stare at that dog for like 30 seconds. If you don't understand the concept of henchmen <laughs> or you, distraction, you don't deserve to live. You're done. You're done, son. You blew it. Go bluey. I loved it. Get out of here. That was the best. Uh, you blew it. I loved her. <laughs> Kabloomskis. Nook. <laughs> What's, what's that damn club it. that they go to? Is it Da Vinci's or some shit? Where, where do they go that's called Da Vinci's? I was trying to think of that. The school. It was a school. The school. The Da Vinci's Because it's in Italy. School. Whereas we yeah. have schools named like Robert E. Lee Elementary. In Italy, they have schools named, uh, named Leonardo Da Vinci. Da Vinci. <laughs> Leonardo Elementary. Da Vinci's children. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> When they're walking into the school and that music's playing, it is so badass. Um, yeah. So the fuck, you really gotta just straight kick an old lady in her fucking bird chest when she's got a goddamn meat cleaver and she's gonna tell you a story. Like, no, just no, just let me kick you in the chest because you're yeah. a frail old woman and you'll crumple just into a ball. But don't forget, women can be stronger than men. I'm not talking about that. Okay, I'm sorry. You're an old person. You're an old person, and your bones are made of dust, and they will just explode if I kick you in the chest. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you kick an That's old person ages, in the dude. chest, okay. they just, they they pop. Remember, like, the putties? The Remember the putty guys from, from uh, the first season of Power Rangers? Like, all you had to do is they just punched them in the Z in the center of the chest, and they just exploded. You just pop an old person straight in the chest, they're going, they're done. They're done. They just turn into mist. Yeah. <laughs> that resets the pacemaker. <laughs> yeah. Just dust no. in the wind. No, like you see Infinity Wars, they straight it's that. In the wind. It's that it's thing. That, it's yeah. That thing. Yeah, wait, wait, just, they just look at you and they're just like, grandson, I don't feel so good. Are you an engineer? <laughs> <laughs> Are you an angel? <laughs> you must be an engineer. La, la, <laughs> Do you la, play la, the la. piano? <laughs> la, 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 That la, bitch la. had a good chain. <laughs> yes she did I loved that I was like oh man what's gonna happen oh she's dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah that chain did not break I would have expected the chain to break before the, the chain the didn't neck break was like I was just like man she got away with, with lots bone. of murder and then this is how she goes <laughs> it's kind of awesome I enjoyed it that's sure. why old ladies shouldn't wear gypsy jewelry yeah don't be a gypsy it doesn't break it's it, it's Unbreakable. Unbreakable gypsy jewelry has special curse that endures with the magic powers. Cut off your head. It will drag you to hell. <laughs> Hello, I'm trying to look like an elephant this month. <laughs> How do you like my swag? You are not gypsy. Lots of Z's and M's. And <laughs> you look like Gary Oldman. He does though. He looks like he, he looks like Gary Oldman in uh, the Dark Knight. Dan Joplin looks like <laughs> Gary Oldman in the Dark Knight right now. <laughs> you really do. Can Except you do a Gary Oldman voice? Um, I'm trying to. Th I'm trying to think of a line. Um, uh, Batman. And no, no. There's, you there's... have a responsibility to the people. We gotta <laughs> let go of my goddamn kids. Let go of my son. That's good. <laughs> good God, Harvey! <laughs> Are you going to stop him? Move his fucking over, you dumb dicks. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right, well, we're wrapping this week's episode up. All right, well, that's Jalo part two. Hey, part two. number one, Jalo. number two, number two, number two. Gotta take a poo, poo, poo. Just kidding. <laughs> He's gonna take a poo. We're gonna get off air. <laughs> we're gonna take a piss, Next though. week, we're gonna watch Suspiria. Yeah, next week we're gonna watch Suspiria, and we're gonna talk about Ooh. whether or not it's even a Jalo film. Spooks what makes it, a, it Is it a Jalo film? Is it supernatural horror? Can they exist in the same world? And, Can uh, they not? Are they exclusive? Are they mutually exclusive? I got some things to say, but I gotta watch the movie first. Dude, yes. if you guys want to find I out the to answers say, to these questions, times. you're gonna need to take a little listen. And you're just gonna have to come on crawling back to us yeah. and clicking like on little our free we're, shit that we we're like do. The little well, no money. suckling we're little well. baby fucking hogs you are, suckling at our teats for our movie quips and tips and little baby zips and zip zap zap and dap dap sucking away dap, dap. just sucking, sucking dry, little piggies just sucking, sucking at my titties sucking on my titty bitty 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 bitties oh yeah I love thanks. pigs thanks sucking tits thanks everyone for have listening a good to my night. show thank you goodbye everyone bye um, well <laughs> well well before I say goodbye before I say goodbye no I'm just kidding all right, bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Follow me on Twitter. Fuck you. Follow me on tits. Fuck you.